Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, what are we looking at today? Game of Thrones. Oh man, that season ender for season seven was kind of disappointing. Really? Yeah. So, not a lot of dragon action until the end. Okay. Sorry, everyone, for the spoilers. Oh, and hold on. You said look up G-O-T, right? Not G-O-T. I-O-T. Oh, is that where this oh. problem came in? So, I was supposed to look up I-O-T? I-O-T, or Internet of Things. Oh, my research is definitely going to be skewed because it's, it's it, all about Barrymore and Frodo. It is usually oh, no, pretty poor. Okay. It is usually pretty poor, and it will be even worse today. <laughs> Luke, could you tell me, okay. could you talk, tell me what IoT we're is? We're talking about IoT, and that is, like you had mentioned, Internet of Things. So it's usually a capital I, a lowercase o, and a capital T. So this is where your, your research has gotten spent a lot of time on this. This is the value that we're and bringing people. Exactly. Wow. So at a, at a bare bones kind of description, it's basically connecting and monitoring anything. So it's having, uh, whether it's your phone, mine just vibrated, uh, your refrigerator, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's collecting data, it's doing something with that data, it, it's updating, but basically connecting things and you being able to see that connection and what's happening. That, that's a super simple. I could read the description if you'd I, like me I to. I would say it's a network, a growing network of smart, connected products. What do you think? I like that. You like that? I thought that kind of summarized it pretty quickly. I, yeah, way way quicker than mine. So here, let, let me give you a game to play. I know oh, you love your games. Love me some games. Guessing games. What is the projected economic impact by 2025 of IoT? I, I don't know the economic impact, but... I know there's somewhere in the 20 billion devices they're predicting by 2020. So I would say if there's 20 billion devices and each device costs $2 billion, I'm going to say it's a $40 billion impact. That's not bad. It is a $6.2 trillion <laughs> impact. But at least is you trillion, guess billion. Is trillion bigger than billion? It is. It okay. has more zeros. Okay. Okay. Don't that's, ask how many more. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of money. So... For everybody that's still lost because we did such a poor job of this, okay, I like to give some examples of IoT that everyone might know about. Okay, say Fitbit, and I like to say Tesla, the cars. Tesla. Yeah. So Fitbit, everybody knows. You I put it on your one. wrist, you yeah. run around, and then it tells your phone, "Hey, you took this many steps, and this was your heart rate, and you're fat, so you need to lose weight, <laughs> and you didn't sleep very well, and you drank too much." It and... basically tells you how lazy you are. So I literally will go days where I'm in the hundreds of steps, and I'll have to go. And this is taking my tiny dogs out for a walk too. I'll be in the hundreds of steps That's and just start swinging my arm around to make it seem like I walked more. That's horrible. Yeah, it's not okay. not good. But then I also chalk Tesla up to that because the cars are tracking your mileage and everything else. And then if they decide that they want to lower your car by half an inch, they I can just press story. a button yeah. and send this update out to all these cars, and they all automatically change. I heard that one. Isn't that, that, that was amazing? a while ago. Like there yeah. was something wrong with the suspension in them, and rather than like like when I get an email from Toyota saying that I have this, I got to drive it into the shop and right. take care of things. They could do this with the IOTs. The, the IOTs. That's how you say it, right? And that, I know Elon is very. Oh. Busy using big supporter the of the Twitter show. too. Yep. He is. Big I think supporter of the show. I feel like he's going to write in soon. I I only can assume as much. So that's my basics of of it. So basically, again, to recap, you have a product like a Fitbit. It gathers up data. It sends data to the cloud. Why do you have to do you have to say it like that? I feel like the cloud is this ominous like crazy thing nobody really understands kind of like big brother it's big brother yeah so okay. it sends the data to big brother okay it then you know shoots out the information it calculates something and then puts it on your device like your smartphone and visualizes that data for you and then you can gain insights from it be that a person be that a business be that anyone so what i found was it takes basically three things to make anything iot 
right? Anything? Anything. You so could make me IoT? We could. So Ooh. I'm going to say my coffee cup, for example. Let's say I okay. want to turn this coffee cup. This is my awesome Chewbacca coffee cup. It is cup. amazing. I'm jealous every time I see it. I know. And I want to turn this into an IoT connected smart device. So the three things you need. First of all, you need an identity. An identity? Yeah, so each device needs to have a unique identity. And there's this thing called IPv6. This is what? Uh, this is internet protocol um, that actually has an unlimited number. Hold on. Hold on. What was the V? Version? Version, okay. Version 6. Thanks. And what they do is they have an unlimited number of identities that they can assign to individual things. So number one, I get uh, an identity for this device. Number like two, one, two. Well, there's maybe a whole they protocol. throw letters in there. If I had time, is to it in binary? You, it is. It is. Oh. But look, whoa! Yeah, look at you throwing out <laughs> the binaries. So, and then it has to be able to communicate. So it has to be Wi-Fi or hardwired in some way. My cup, I would choose to be Wi-Fi, so okay. I can take it places. And then the last. I'm glad thing, that you keep hitting it off the table. That helps with okay. this. It does. It does <laughs> with the the, the the audience listening to my coffee cup. And then the last thing is it needs sensors because if I'm not sensing or doing anything, then why make it IoT? So in this example, I want to know who's drinking out of it and how much they're drinking. So I would put a sensor. Who is drinking out of it? I would put an I would put an RFID reader on here that would know if your RFID or my RFID was reading it. I would have a sensor that tells me how much volume of liquid is in there and the temperature. So I could know that you drank out of my coffee cup yesterday and you chose to do ice water and you did 20 ounces and it's going to give me that feedback and I can know that. Wow, that sounds like a great use of technology. <laughs> it's, a, it's a horrible use of technology for my coffee oh, cup. Okay. But for other things, other I think it's a great use of technology. So I think this is a good segue into the next part of our show. So done lightly. That was a uh, that was a fail, but okay. Okay. So I was looking at who works with IoT. Okay. And I'm like, oh, cool. Samsung, LG, Apple, Google, well, like everyone. Everybody. Everyone in the world is Everybody doing does. IoT now. So I just skipped that section or okay. that segment. Okay. But the, my favorite segment of the show, unless you have something else you want to throw in there about the basics. No? Uh, I have a little bit of history. Did wow. you know any there's, history? There's history of IoT? Yeah. I thought it showed up like last week. Well, yeah, it was maybe two weeks ago. Okay. So hit me. The, this this is one that hits close to home for us. This is great. So the concept of networking smart devices was discussed as early as 1982, and there was a modified Coca-Cola machine right here in Pittsburgh oh, yeah? at Carnegie Mellon University no. that was the first connected device, and it was able to report inventory, and it was able to know whether the newly loaded drinks were cold or not. Right here at CMU back in 1982. Now, granted, this probably wasn't using Wi-Fi. They probably had this enormous cable plugged in. It was, the side I was going to say machine. it's actually a guy standing there with a paper checking well, off how many Mountain Dews well, were purchased. Let's let's not. Did Mountain Dew hairs. exist in 1982? I'm sure it did. I don't okay. think you were born in 1982. I was you? born, depending on what part of 1982 you were talking don't about. Tell me you were born in 1982. May 2nd oh, of 82. Goodness. My mom will tell you it was oh, the greatest gracious. day of her life. Sorry, my brother, you are not her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true at all. So, okay. so that really hits home, us being obviously Pittsburgh bound here. Yeah, that does hit home. That's pretty cool. It's not surprising that it was CMU. Yeah, they're pretty smart. Other than our uh, colleges and where to go episode where every answer was MIT, CMU's up there as well. They're like the second. They're, yeah. they're, yeah, they're okay. pretty close. All right. Move on. Move on to my favorite segment. And I came up with this yesterday. I think it's just brilliant. And I got this idea because the richest person I've ever met in person once said that Internet of Things is more like the Internet of Crappy Things. Okay. Which I thought was kind of funny. So I thought we would name this segment, Is It Crap? Is It Crap? Where I'm going to give you a product, and I don't know if you have any listed. but oh, I have a whole. Oh, a good. Then list. we can both go back and forth okay. then. We'll read off a product and decide, is it crap? Like, is it worth being IoT? Right. Is that what exactly. we mean? Kind of like your coffee mug. I would probably consider that to be crap. I would agree with you. Okay. So I'm going to skip my first one because everyone knows the Amazon Echo, the Lenovo Assistant. But the one that I wanted to bring up is the Apple HomePod. I never so, even heard of this one. So it just got unveiled in June. Okay. 
And it's basically the same thing as Amazon Echo, which is now, what, it's been on the market for years, at or least. at least a year, yeah. right? And it looks like a roll of toilet paper. No. It costs $349. For toilet paper? For toilet paper. And it has a little bit fancier speakers and okay. the Apple A8 processor. But it's the same type of thing. It's, it's a speaker. The same thing. It has a, so it talks back to you, basically. But it, instead of being the long cylinder or that puck-looking thing, okay. it looks like a roll of toilet paper. Okay. It's white or gray. Oh. <laughs> so it's, Apple, of course. Yeah. So do you think that's crap? And I only ask because I really like the Echo, but I think coming out with the same product that looks like toilet paper two years later is kind of crap. Well, the reason why I do like it is I feel like... Like competition in that market is a good thing. Like the fact that That's Amazon true. basically rules the world now, kinda. Uh -huh. uh, I think that having some competition from a company like Apple that makes, you know, some pretty decent products, I'd say. Yeah. I feel like that's a good thing. Okay. So I'm going to give you another one because I thought that was just a layup. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is definitely a the layup. June Smart Oven. Have you heard of this? Uh, I have June, like the month? J-U-N-E, smart okay, oven. like the month, okay. The digital experience showcase, consumers can now use IoT to make their dinner. I'm doing a, a pitch for them. Okay. The countertop smart oven can be controlled with a complimentary June app, enabling users to control the oven with their iPhones or iPad and monitor their cooking with a live stream video. The oven monitors the food's weight and temperature and cooks it with precision weight sensors using Wi-Fi connectivity to send notification to the user's mobile device. It costs a mere $1,495. Is it crap? It sounds like a toaster oven to me because you said <laughs> countertop. Uh, so it sounds like a toaster oven to me. Uh, you know what? I So I like to cook, and I As know you I, like yes. to cook. I think you and I would not like that because there's a certain craft that you an can't. Art. There's an art to cooking. Yes. But my wife, on the other hand, she is the worst. Would she? Would she be angry if I started sharing stories of her cooking? No, she, no, no, no. <laughs> let's let's not do that. So, but someone like my wife, who is not a good cook, and she could just like throw this hunk of pork in an oven and say, "Cook it," you know, well done, because that's the only way she eats anything. I, I think that would be good for her because she needs something to tell her how to cook. Okay. That's good. So I'm going to say for a true chef like you and I, of true, course, uh, yeah. Gordon Ramsay level. I mean, maybe a little better than that. Yeah. I'm going to say crap. But for someone like my, my wife, I'm going to say it's a great idea. All right. So go ahead and give me one and let's okay. see what happens. So this is one that I loved, James, because I love that I'm speaking and you're just standing up in the middle of me talking. So this one was awesome, I thought. We're in Boston. We're in Boston. Like three weeks ago, four weeks oh, ago, we were, whatever it to is. To go to MIT and Yeah, to do yeah. MIT. And while we were there, James has this great idea. Let's <laughs> let's bike. And, they, and it was like ninety degrees out. It was the worst idea ever. <laughs> but Boston has this this network of bike stands that are IoT connected, so you can know how many bikes are at the bike stand, how many spots are open. They lock up, they get charged to your phone, and it, it was just this amazing for me, IOT to like improve public transportation, like in the inner cities. And I thought that was amazing. Yeah, it, it was awesome. It's great that the city has the infrastructure set up to make it doable. Yeah, that was great. Like swipe a card, ride anywhere you want. Not to mention if it was what, 30 minutes, you yeah. could just toss it back and not be charged. Yeah, I thought it was, was awesome. Great. And I had an app on my phone. I remember looking that at was it so like, cool. there's no bikes at this station. So let's go to the station, you know, half a mile away. I thought that was pretty neat. And the app was so good that we got to the one station and there were three bikes there. Yeah. And it said there was only one. And I'm like, well, why did it lie to us? And it turns out the two were broken and, I and needed repaired. That. So right. that was really, yeah, really So it knows great. whenever someone reports a broken bike or whenever you plug the bike back in or, and lock it up, it kind of checks it. I thought that was awesome. I thought it was awesome as well. Good. I would say that is not crap. Yeah, I think that's a great one. I think every city. Pittsburgh has something similar. It's starting, and they just started it. And, theirs and it is, really screwed up downtown And it's streets. like a lock and unlock, though. It yeah. doesn't have all that other stuff. So, yeah. All right, I have one for you. Shoot. The Calibre... Ara Smart Toothbrush. I feel like you're saying that wrong. But I, I usually am, 
So this smart toothbrush collects data about its user's brushing habits, even when it's not connected to the corresponding app. It provides users with feedback about their brushing technique based on integrated artificial intelligence technology. So there's a lot of big words in the description at least. Yes. So basically what I'm getting is it monitors how you brush your teeth and it only charges you 130 bucks to do so. So what our listeners can't see is me shaking my head in disgust. <laughs> so this one, I mean, there's certain things that we've just been doing for hundreds if not thousands of years. And granted, <laughs> Way back in, you know, Game of Thrones days, people's teeth were falling out. They, they were. Actually, a lot of the Game of Thrones people have very nice teeth, Which doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, uh, but I feel like this is one of those things where it's a gimmick. You know, I get electric toothbrushes because it actually brushes your teeth better. But I feel like, you know, just, just brush your teeth. Yeah. I, I, I feel like that one's crap. Yeah, I, I agree. My nephew, he's he's little. He's got this teeth brushing thing down already. Okay. Uh, I don't think you need an IoT toothbrush. I think it's crap. Okay. You're putting crap in your mouth. I, I don't think that's... You're brushing your teeth, so technically oh. you're cleaning it. But All right. We'll let that one go. All right. Okay. My next one is early earthquake detection. Whoa. Okay. So the one thing I want to make sure that we talk about, James, is I don't want to just focus on consumer products because that tends to be what people think of whenever they think of IoT. Oh, it's my phone. It's my toothbrush. Yeah, it's, it's I think all that's what's most things. easily relatable. But IoT really does all kinds of different things. And one of the ways they can use IoT is they can actually you know, put these sensors you know, in earthquake prone areas and they can collect data, you know, via satellite, you know, signals and know when those kind of pre-tremors that happen before an earthquake. Are they kind of pre-tremors or are they pre-tremors? Yeah, I guess they are pre-tremors, okay. but we never knew they were happening before, before until, like, IOT. until like a big earthquake happened. Like wow. someone had to be standing there be like, whoa, it's shaking. But now you can put these all over the place where you have problematic areas, collect that data and potentially have an early warning system for earthquakes i think that's i think that's a great one i don't live in california so it doesn't really affect me too much we, we've had earthquakes yeah they're but, like 1.2s or yeah. something or maybe a three but you're right i think i think i see the value of that i don't know why it needs to be iot so much i it, it, i think because it's such a big area if you think of california how early are they detecting I don't know. Are they saving lives or they said, oh, see, we did see that one coming. No, I feel like it's I feel like it's probably early enough to save lives. OK, well, then that's cool. Yeah, I like that you're coming up with these great things. And I'm like, here's a toothbrush. <laughs> well, you are the worst. I but... am. OK, let me give you another one okay. then. Let's see what one I want. Oh, no, that one's pretty useless. That one's pretty bad. OK, how about this one? The high mirror, a smart beauty mirror. Oh my goodness. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, don't even no. Just stop. No, <laughs> rubbish. I just think it's so funny. It's two hundred sixty bucks. It enables you to analyze and assess your skin conditions, wrinkles, and dark circles, and it helps you improve your skin. And then it has five different environment settings to see what you look like in different light. Now, myself, as I'm dressed up in jeans and a t-shirt today and that's the most dressed up I get, this probably isn't much value. But I could see some people that I know, maybe that would provide them some sort of value. Okay, so I was looking at the clock. You just spoke for 30 seconds. I'm not getting any of that time back discussing an internet-connected mirror. Let's go to the next yeah, one. Yeah, rubbish. Okay, I'm up. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's called. There's different varieties of it, but this is that IoT doorbell. Uh -huh. where whether you're home or not home, there's a camera and you can actually see, you know, who's at the door. It is motion activated, I think, in some cases. And you can actually, when people come up on your porch and this stuff I love, and I'm sure you've seen these videos, is the FedEx package stealers come up yeah. and you can see their face like right there. They're stealing your packages. They get busted like, you know, an hour later. Uh, I think it's a great idea. 
Um, there's a whole comedy bit that I saw. This guy talks about when people came to your house 20 years ago versus now. So 20 years ago, someone knocked on your door. Everybody would rush to the door and you'd bring out one of the Entenmann's cakes because someone came to your door. Now when people knock on your door, you hide and look at your phone to see who it is before you decide to answer. Yep. Rubbish or not rubbish? So I, I'm split on this one. Really? I guess it's cool because your packages get stolen if you live in the ghetto, but okay. uh, that's not nice to say. No. But, I mean, just don't answer your door if someone rings it and you don't want to talk to them. What about them. security reasons? People security, breaking in? it's good. Yeah. No, I agree with that. So you're leaning more towards value I there. think it's value. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me enter the lightning round with you. I'm going to rattle some off. No description. Just... just tell me crap or great. Okay. The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed. Great. The, we did that, the Smart Fridge Cam. Great. Wow, I think that's garbage. Open oh. your door. Uh, no, but let's say, how many times have you been at the store and you don't remember what you I don't, have? I make a list like everyone has forever. Master Lock. Great. Smart Blinds. Horrible. Smart Smoke Detector. Ah, safety, great. Smart Pillow. Stupid. Smart fragrance. <laughs> Stupider. Smart air purifier. Smart. Smart lawn riding mower. Basically making sure all your oil, gas, everything is filled. Right, just take care of your equipment. Come on. Uh, sprinkler control system. Ah, that's dumb. And smart recycling tool. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to say great because it all saves right. the environment. It saves the environment and you love that. Okay, okay lightning round is over. And with that, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. We have one. We do not have one, Luke. You so, know better than that. So, so Nest decided not to sponsor us when we reached out? We haven't even mentioned them yet, so no, Nest okay. did not decide to sponsor us. Hey, Nest, us. we'll talk about you later. That's true, we will. Uh, but we do have a number of shout-outs. Watch this one. I love me some shout-outs. Michael E. wrote in to answer what city was or is the... Uh, what was it? Powdered metal capital of the world. And he was totally wrong. Oh, don't don't burn the dude. But, but yes, he, he was it. wrong. I'm but I appreciate that he didn't just I Google the answer and do that. So yeah, thanks for someone writing in about that. Adam L wrote back again. I uh, talked to him a little bit more about what he does. Cutting, cutting rock. Uh, with a CNC machine. Cool stuff. Rock? Yeah. That's very interesting. Cad Noobs wrote back. They gave us a shout out in one of their episodes. So go oh, listen, everybody. Love for me some cad noobs. Yeah, right. Jake S. and Carol P. also both wrote in. Okay. So uh, thanks for all of you for listening. Five this week ties our record. Really? Yeah. So for any of you who uh, subscribe and want some sweet unprofessional engineering stickers, please feel free to email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. I have one more shout out. Another shout out? You usually do these, but because you don't pay attention to our Facebook I don't. inbox like I, don't. I do. It actually uh, took you like three minutes to get back to him. So It did. Go so ahead. Joe F. Joe, he's a longtime listener. Yeah, so I asked Joe, uh, all right, not Joe, I asked our audience members in general about putting in a cold air intake on my Toyota Tacoma. You did, I and, remember. And Joe, if we didn't get Joe stickers already, we got to get him stickers. Yeah, stickers, I think. Okay, perfect. So Joe says, you know, definitely do it. It's going to give, it's going to sound better. It's going to give you uh, a little bit of mileage. It's going to give you a little bit of performance. Uh, and this cat is, or a, this cat was a former Toyota a master tech isn't that awesome when he said when he wrote that in there i was like, what? So like, like I what's kinda, the chances yeah like i kind of have to do it now you do so and so, send a picture yes yeah, so what i'm gonna do joe if you're listening is i'm gonna take a few pictures and we may even do a whole i think we do like a podcast on like how to maybe install one of these and and maybe do a little bit of mileage do a little bit of research and actually maybe. well we'll see maybe we'll see i'll do it okay Behind, under the hood with Luke. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. All right. So let's uh, quickly jump into how do you turn your home into a smart home? How about that? By me moving in. Wow. <laughs> see, see what I did there? Whoa. That was, <laughs> that was great, Luke. Uh, <sighs> no. So what do you do <laughs> no. and what's the cost associated? I feel like every smart home needs an Echo or Apple toilet paper roll or something like that. <laughs> What do you think? Apple will never sponsor us now. No, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, I think so, but I, I have a question about that. Go ahead. So are you saying that these Echoes 
are f are connected to the home and control the home, or is this I, just like, hey, order me paper towels from Amazon? It can be either, but you can like turn on your TV and have it change the channel for you. It's like the ultimate in laziness. Do you know? And I don't know this because you're way more educated about this than I am. Are these? devices proprietary so for instance i have a samsung television and i have an amazon i don't think Echo. so i think it'll hook up to any of them okay yeah that's cool otherwise you're really in yeah. trouble yeah you'd be in a ton of trouble yeah okay so next hey you already gave them a shout out nest love do you want to talk about nest yeah, so it's awesome it, see though maybe a little I, expensive. I thought it was awesome i did think it was awesome and then i was considering putting in a new furnace and a new air conditioner at one of my rental properties so i talked to this hvac guy does hvac all the time and i actually talked to another person too An about hvac it. guy that does hvac all the time all the time wow. so i talked to this cat and he's like i asked him about the nest and about all this you know turning is your it air the up nest or is it nest I'm going to say the nest because okay. it sounds cooler. And he says they're crap. He says the reason being, and you and I are, have a little simulation background, he says adjusting the temperature in your home up and down as you're there and not there is a waste of money. And I'm sure Nest has all kinds of data to prove that he's That's, wrong. Okay. But the idea is your house is a big giant thermal mass. So let's right. say if during the day when you're not there, you let it heat up to 78 degrees and then at four o'clock you crank your air conditioner up to cool it down to 72, you're just running that air conditioner like crazy to get it down to 72. And he said you're better off just setting it at 72 and never touching it. So whether you have one of those old dial ones like you had at your mom's house or whatever he said he said that nest he said for home use doesn't add a ton of value but he said if you have he said if you have big big houses and you shut different places off and you're gone for extended periods of time he said it is a good idea but he said daily house use he said it's not a great benefit interesting i like where his head's at with that yeah yeah makes a lot of sense i mean that's a lot of thermal mass to heat up and cool down okay. Okay, how about this? The Kepler Natural Gas and Carbon Monoxide Monitor. Yeah, that's that's definitely 119. a 119. So we're at about uh, 4, 5, 70 right now, <sighs> assuming we keep the nest because it's cool. Well, yeah, we'll keep the nest. Hydro Point. I kind of liked this one. It. Which one was this? Oh, yeah, it, it kind of uh, takes care of water. It, it gauges your water usage. Yeah, but it, but do you want to gauge it? Like, if, what am I going to do? Not use water if I get to a certain like I'm not going to shower. I if think I'm... it. Yeah, well, I don't know. I guess it's <laughs> detecting leaks and things like that. Okay, okay. And leaks can be very expensive. My favorite mother-in-law just had like a six hundred dollar water bill because she had like a pebble stuck Whoa. on a sensor in her pool. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it was nuts. Uh, let's see what else do we have, Luke? Ember socket, small smart light bulbs. That are very that are made with LEDs, but uh, I guess that's about it. Smart light bulbs or the SwitchMate, okay, which is a smart switch system. <laughs> I like the idea. <laughs> I'm not sure why you laugh. I like just that. think it's like, well, how much is my electricity costing me that I'm going to invest in all these things at yeah. like 50 bucks a pop? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess there's the long term return. I love the idea of the smart plugs. Okay. Because I, I do like the idea of, like, when I'm not in a room, hey, just shut my lamp off without me. But it, it wasn't IoT, but do you remember the clapper? I do. You didn't have to be near it. You would clap just clap. Clap on, clap, clap off. So that was, that was old school IoT. You could shut it off and on without touching it, and it was great. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you like that. But I do like the idea of smart plugs in the house. Okay. There's another one, Sensibo. It's a device that turns any AC into a smart AC. Sense of bow? So I think okay. this turn goes back into your whole Nest conversation. Okay. Like, well, just keep your house cool, and then you're good to go. Gotcha. But I guess if it's a dumb AC unit, it, like you don't have central air, this might make more sense. Mm -hmm. Because those things are just cranking and cranking and keeping the house cold and dropping the temperature. Whereas if you want it kept at 68, maybe you need these turned intelligent. Yep. So these ones, I think, are a little bit smarter, other than the $160 price tag. Exactly. Okay, do you have any others for a smart home that you think need added on there? So I feel like appliances are all smart nowadays. Like I've they seen are. like washers, dryers, dishwashers. Uh, I was just at a friend's house the other day and he doesn't have the whole 
refrigerator that you can like see into via your phone but he does have a refrigerator where on the refrigerator he can you know say he needs certain things and it goes to his phone and I saw that his and water dispenser can actually he can set via his phone uh, how many ounces and to keep track of how much water you're drinking if you're using the water dispenser so I think that's interesting stuff uh, I my guess is these appliances, whether you actually turn it on to connect to your phone or not, all appliances in the next 10 years are going to at least be IoT and smart capable. Whether you use them or not, I think is a different story. Okay. Well, it feels like it's going to be about a thousand bucks to make a smart house out of your dumb house. That's not that bad. I don't no, think, but right? is it worth it? Like you're saying, in 10 years, everything's going to be smart. So yeah. All right, there's one more thing we should talk about, Ooh. and that is IoT for industry. Yes. We kind of have to cruise through this one, but that's okay. And so I did want to say pretty much everything I learned about what is a IoT, and not only how does it work for your Fitbit, but how does industry use it came from a handy little paper, The Essentials of IoT for Modern Engineers, that Autodesk put out a little while ago. Okay. It's like 20 pages, but it's mostly pictures, so someone like us can read it. <laughs> and it really breaks down, like, how industry is starting to use IoT and how it's actually changing the way engineers do their jobs. So that was cool. Yeah, because I, I think the, the value that everybody sees with IoT, and, and I'm not an IoT hater, I, I love all the connection that we get with our personal devices. Sure. The idea of taking all that value and now you take it to your job and the things that you're making at your job. So, I mean, I, I have a list of industries and I'm just going to run down them and you sure. may have some, some there's, but you know, media is obviously doing this. So you're, you're, you're on Amazon, you're on Netflix, they serve things up based off of your preferences. Uh, environmental monitoring, we talked about that with earthquakes. Uh, infrastructure management, so keeping track of buses and subways, sure. and knowing when to add more buses in a route based off of volume of people. Uh, agriculture uh, is an obvious one. Um, Medical, healthcare, building and home, automation, we just talked about. Uh, consumer application, we've been talking about. But manufacturing, to me, is a big one that I think is really going to probably change pretty dramatically because it's really inexpensive to monitor stuff. It's super easy. Wi-Fi is literally everywhere. So you don't, you used to physically have to be connected to something and run all these crazy right. wires. Nowadays, to be able to transmit data wirelessly to the things that you're making to help you make better parts and devices to give your customers better products, I think is huge in manufacturing. And really, we're just seeing the beginning of it nowadays. Yeah, so let me add a little bit onto that. First, apparently industrial Internet of Things is IIoT, <sighs> which I feel like is made up, but that's fine. You yeah. know, call it what you want. <laughs> but it can it can really change the way people are designing and how the company is running because, because, because of this, it improves customer service service. Yep. You know if somebody's parts failing ahead of time, so this can help uh, reduce warranties. Yep. You can uh, increase the uptime of products. All of these things are really, really pretty great, not just for the company to improve what they're doing, but to improve your customer experience as well. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, if, if I have a choice as you know a, a person buying manufacturing goods, let's say I'm buying a conveyor belt, I want to know how that conveyor belt's running is 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 the motor you know getting to a cycle that's going to need maintenance and if i have to choose between two different you know people that are making those conveyor belts the one that's going to give me preventative maintenance and you know all that kind of stuff that's probably the manufacturer i'm going to choose unless it's like crazy expensive but right. again it's easy and relatively inexpensive if you think of in the grand scheme of things when you're buying these things uh, it just makes sense to monitor stuff. Yeah. One example from industry that I will give with a company that I worked with, uh, they created something that monitored the temperatures of refrigerators or things like that. And I was like, yeah, that's great, big deal. But they were working with, I think it was Wendy's or someone like that. Where Where's the beef, the, Wendy's? Yeah. Okay. Like the freezers making, and it was just tracking the temperatures at all times. That way, if there was a power outage, they knew what the temperatures got to. And if there was somebody who claimed they got sick off of the meat, they knew that it wasn't because it was the temperature rising. So all of this data was stored on the cloud, so they always had... That's interesting. Yeah, they I always like had that. backup of what the, the meat quality should be. I love that. Yeah, I thought it was really a good idea. 
All right, so with that, uh, I think that's all I have for IoT right now. There's a ton we could get into about this. Yeah, I, I feel like we'll probably have some follow-up podcasts on this because, again, we talked a ton about consumer and what it means to us personally, but I think everybody listening to our podcast, I'm sure, is a very professional engineer, <laughs> uh, and I'm sure they could take you know IoT and start implementing it in the things they're doing every day. So yeah, I think we'll probably definitely have some follow-ups on this. Absolutely. All right. Well, until next time. See you.